A new virtual reality tool will detect signs of pre-dementia in seniors with up to 90% accuracy. This will cut screening times from hours to around 15 minutes. Now, amid rising cases of dementia in Singapore, only one in eight people who have pre-dementia are diagnosed with it during primary care visits. Pre-dementia is currently screened through traditional paper-based assessments, but such screenings miss out on how dementia could impact day-to-day -day settings. With this tool, called Kavia 2 patients complete a series of tasks using virtual reality. It will then assess the accuracy and how fast they complete tasks like counting money or shopping. The tool is developed by Singh Health Polyclinics and a local tech firm and could be rolled out to active ageing centres and other clinics in the future. These paper tests are usually uh, done uh, by an assessor, so the person would need to be there uh, to administer the test. Yeah, so sometimes this test, uh, it, may take, uh, it can take quite a long time, and this cover assessment usually it, will take, it can take from uh, around 8 minutes to 10 minutes, yeah, and not exceeding 15 minutes. And we have in the studio today the main author of the Singh Health study using VR dementia tool Caviar 2, Clinical Associate Professor Tan Yap Chuan. He's Director of Research at the Primary Care Research Institute at Singh Health Polyclinics. Professor Tan, uh, thanks for joining us tonight. So take us through how the study was conducted on 280 patients who have come forward. Yeah, thank you for the opportunity to share the results of this trial. So what we have developed, this Caviar 2, uh, is a virtual reality software in which uh, 280 of our uh, patients in the polyclinics are invited to participate in a study mm -hmm. whereby first we actually carry out the uh, tests on them using the virtual reality software and after that uh, they will be compared uh, their performance with the current benchmark which is the paper and pen uh, type of uh, uh, questioning. Mm -hmm. This is the usual test called the MOCA but it is a series of tests that uh, we ask questions about what's the time now, where are you? And uh, we also have some simple arithmetic uh, tests, such as counting down from 100, subtracting 7. Mm. But uh, using this paper and uh, pen test, uh, we can't really correlate with what their actual day-to-day uh, -day activities of living. So, for example, uh, how do we know that they are able to cross the road safely? Mm -hmm. And uh, by using the virtual reality, we are able to really uh, have this ecological valid testing. That means we are correlating their performance using the software with what they actually uh, carry out in their day-to-day -day activities. Mm -hmm. In this way, we know that uh, whether their executive function is actually normal or otherwise impaired. And by understanding how they actually go around living uh, with all these activities, we should be able to intervene early uh, by identifying where are the deficiency. And of course, uh, we also want to prepare the caregivers of how they can actually manage them uh, before they actually uh, have deterioration of the cognition. Yes, so as you were sharing with us, this MOCA test, right, that is um, the traditional paper-based assessment. So, so how is this VR-based uh, system an improvement from that? Or wh why do we need this tool at this point? Right. Uh, so this is a very uh, specially designed software. Mm. Uh, three family doctors actually come together to design it. Mm. And we design 13 virtual scenarios, uh, starting from uh, when a person gets up uh, in the morning, uh, they have to do their washout, they have to prepare their breakfast, they have to choose their wardrobe before they go out. And when they go out, do they are uh, able to uh, find the shops that they want to buy the things? Mm -hmm. And uh, we actually give them a shopping list and see whether they can remember the shopping list. And of course, when they purchase, the, for example, the fruits, there's a cost to it. We ask them to see whether they are able to uh, calculate the expenditure mm. and of course how to pay, make the right payments. So all these are day-to-day -day activities yeah. that we uh, are unable to assess just by paper and pen mm. but uh, the virtual reality assessment allow us to, sh for example, uh, somehow like shadow them uh, virtually. So we are able to see whether they are able to uh, function normally in their day-to-day -day life and in this way we have a better understand and understanding of their cognitive health. And uh, this study was conducted between August 2023 and January 2024. Um, how do you check that the results from this VR tool were accurate? 
Right. So uh, this software is there's an automated uh, calculation system embedded in the software, mm -hmm. and in which uh, uh, the time taken to perform the 13 scenarios, as well as how did they actually do it. If they do it wrongly, of course uh, there will be no score, and if they do it very quickly and accurately, there will be a score. Mm -hmm. And by computing these uh, scores all together across 13 scenarios, we have an understanding of their cognitive health across six domains. Mm -hmm. That means from uh, uh, day-to-day -day executive functions to learning and memory mm -hmm. to social cognition. Uh, to uh, virtual perception, perception motors function. It means if you see something, yeah. are you able to react appropriately? So this is how we assess them. Can Singaporeans just walk in to get a test done for cognitive uh, impairment if they feel something may be wrong or do they actually need a referral uh, by a GP? And well, what are some of the early signs that they need to be aware of? Right. So currently, uh, the software is at the experimental stage, which we have proven that it is valid. That means it can assess cognition. Mm. We also find that it is a reliable tool. That means uh, if we use the tool again uh, in a short period of time interval, they are still able to perform and get the same score. That means it's actually quite reliable. Okay. So this is how. But as I mentioned earlier, this is still uh, experimental. Mm -hmm. uh, it's only when we uh, further enhance it and of course couple it with some intervention that this tool will become even more useful uh, for us to assess the cognition, especially we are facing a super aging population in Singapore. Yeah, and, and cases of dementia are rising also in yes, Singapore. Indeed. Um, as I was asking earlier, Professor Tan, what, what are some early warning signs that people should look out for if they feel something is wrong or if they feel that they need to get themselves checked? Right. So uh, at the moment, the uh, paper and pen uh, test is only considered and administered if you actually already show signs of uh, early dementia, mm. which might be already significantly uh, too late mm. uh, for us to intervene. So we actually wanted to uh, feel this test when people are still not feeling anything that uh, they feel uh, incapacitated. Yeah. You now we want to uh, screen them more upstream to identify very early where there are deficits in terms of memory and, uh, and we try to intervene early. So currently it's still experimental, but we are trying to bring it to the uh, community as soon as we find that uh, there's something that we can do to address the co uh, cognitive impairment. All right, Professor Tan, thank you so much for coming in to speak with us. Uh, that was Clinical Associate Professor Tang Yap Chuan from Singh Health Polyclinics.